Hey there, this is Stephanie, the hands, hair, and heart of CornerstoneCreate.com. Thank you for being here with me today. We're going to have a lot of fun making this simple card. Okay, so I want to show you guys the products that I'll be using to make this card today. I'll be using this a cornucopia stamp from Anthony's Papercraft. If you remember my video from a few weeks ago, I went to a stamp scrap and art tour and I met Anthony's Papercraft while I was there and it was super exciting. All right, so next I'll be working with Strathmore Mixed Media Paper. This is vellum surface, so it's very, very smooth. If I open it up, you'll see that it's just plain white paper and that's all there is to it. So after that, I'll be picking up this texture paste. It's, super, it's a super soft and fluffy texture paste, and its whole purpose is just to add uh, texture to the card. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Alright, so let's get to the favorite part, the stamping. I'm going to start off using my Versamark. This stamp is very, very detailed, especially when it comes down to the corn and the little, little corn hairs. So I want to make sure that I get all that and I'm going to press the stamp into, I'm going to press the stamp into my ink and make sure that I'm getting as complete coverage as I possibly can. Next, I'll be using my gold embossing powder. This is just gold embossing powder from Recollections. This is the uh, fine detail powder, so you're not going to get any of that sparkliness or anything, but it's going to be a nice bold gold. Now, if you'll notice, you'll see all my Tombows on this side, and that's because earlier this week on Instagram, I had done some coloring, and I had just got finished doing that coloring while I was recording this. I was going to do something similar for this card, but as I started looking at it, I pretty much like just the white and the gold, so that's why the card wound up going this way. And then, honestly, just to do what I did, I didn't need the mixed media paper, but I kept going with it as it was. So I heat emboss this, and I'm going to cut this out. There wasn't a die to go with this. I would have loved for there to have been one, but there wasn't a die, so I just had to fussy cut this out. When you're doing your own fussy cutting, you always want to hold your scissors in your dominant hand and do all the moving of the paper with your non-dominant hand. At least that's what helps me out, uh, especially when it comes to doing these little super super curvy and super tight curves. Like, this is a struggle right here. I'm struggling really hard not to cut into that heat embossing, but it's hard, but not impossible. Alright, so let's get into the texture paste background. I started off with just regular 80 pound cardstock. Nothing special to it. It could be anything. I taped that to my desk and then I taped my stencil over it. Now this texture paste is just regular old Ranger white texture paste. You can add colors to it if you wanted to and that would be super easy just by putting a little bit of dye on an acrylic block and mixing in some texture paste. Just telling you so you can know for the next time. But I'm going to keep mine white just because I wanted to add some texture and some variation to my background behind my cornucopia. Now I'm using a flat palette knife and that's not really ideal. It's just what I had available to me because I couldn't find my other palette knife. So the palette knife that you want to use actually has a step in it and that would just make it that much easier to spread. But like I said, this is what I had available and this palette knife really does do the job. For the stencil that I'm using, it's the Nature Stampin' Stencil Set by Recollections. Again, this was another pickup that I got from Michaels, probably using a coupon. It has four different stencils in it and a, and maybe like a two by three inch set of stamps. It was dragonflies and a couple of other things up there. Really nice stamp set. I, I like the Stampin' Stencil set. The only thing about it is the stencils are a little flimsy, so it takes a little bit of working with. But you just saw me use it, so you can kind of use that as a guideline for how you would be able to use it. I'm going to carefully take this stencil off and let it dry to the side. Now due to movie editing magic, it looks like I'm going to go ahead and use the texture paste card. I didn't. This is actually like maybe 30 minutes later. So it's well dried and ready for use. Now I'm going to set my cornucopia down using some foam adhesive from Daris. I'm going to take that backing off using my tool in one. It's really hard to peel it off with your fingers. So having something sharp, even just a safety pin would be helpful in this situation. Now, for anybody who watches my videos, you should know that I have a love and hate relationship with glossy accents. I actually got to the point where I just quit glossy accents a little while ago, but when I went to the Scrap and Art Fair a couple of weeks ago, I decided that, hey, 
maybe I'll try it again. I saw these little pink tips and those are supposed to help with the flow of gl glossy accents. So I decided I'd try it. And it's been good so far. The little tip has a second tip and you can see it at the top of my desk is white and that has a needle that goes inside of the larger pink needle and that keeps the pink needle from getting clogged up and it's been great like I'm squeezing this bottle super hard right now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the white tip with the needle in it and kind of ring that around inside the pink part and kind of clear that up a little bit and after that it works perfectly is great so i would suggest that anybody who has that problem go do that and then always from now on i will always use glossy accents with one of these flow tips so now i'm going to use glossy accents to set my flowers down you can use glue if you want glossy accents was just what i had on hand and i feel like it's going to hold my flowers better than just wet glue and it'll dry faster which is a big factor for me when it came to using it Yep, and that little glossy accents trick did what I needed it to do, flowing right on through. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put this down, and then I'm going to use my Nouveau Buttercream Drops. I'm so in love with these drops. I'm so glad that I got these when I went to the Stamp Scrap and Art Fair. Uh, I just got all these colors. I'm in love. This was uh, Buttercream. Yep, this was Buttercream Nouveau Drop. I'm glad that I got it, and... I'm going to go ahead and test this on a piece of scrap paper just so I can make sure that the flow's right, that it's not stuck. Because the last place that you want a big ugly drop of Nouveau drop is on your card where you're about to use. So I'm going to go ahead and put that away and I'm going to glue down another die. So I wanted this card to have a bunch of stuff going on in the background. So it was the texture paste and I used this die. This die is a Spellbinders Arched Elegance Pocket die. Now there's actually a bigger part that goes to this, but I'm just using this one small little triangle. But you should see the, the whole die set is beautiful and you can make a gorgeous cards with it. I'm going to place this down and that's going to be the end of my card. So that's all that I have for you guys. Go ahead and check the links below if there's anything that you saw that you are interested in. Make sure you visit me on my blog. I'd love to have you there. Follow me on Instagram and make sure you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day guys. Bye.